and welcome back to Dream Girl. I'm Sheen, your host, and today I have the pleasure of welcoming the amazing Fatin. So Fatin is a life and executive coach, and she is dedicated to mental well-being as well as positive psychology. We will deep dive a little bit into what that means, but for now, welcome. Hi, Fatin. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words. Yes. So what you have mentioned is what I do. I would want to add that um, I'm uh, I'm a mother uh, for two gorgeous and healthy kids. I'm a partner at Brightfields, which is a company that is available. It's present in Qatar and UAE and in the UK. And I have unwavering belief in uh, people's potential. So I think that's what makes me, um, um, I think that's what I fully believe in. And that's what I do. I do what I believe in. And I believe in people's potential. Oh, I like that. I like yeah. I like how you phrase it, because that's what coaches do, right? You try to bring out the best yes. in someone, whether there's potential or this the state of mental well-being. But tell me a bit, what is positive psychology and I know you do a lot of positive leadership and positive workplaces but tell us a little bit more about it yeah so positive psychology is the science of what makes life worth living and I want to stress on the fact that it's a science it's not like a self-help technique okay and uh, it's based on the foundation that every living individual every individual would want to lead and live a meaningful and fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's so easy for people to fall in love with positive psychology because we all want that. So I always, you know, start my workshops, for example, by asking people like, what sparks joy in you? And they would say, you know, self, uh, self belief or uh, connection mm -hmm. or uh, peace or happiness. And if I keep on digging and what does that give you and what does that give you and what does that give you, it all ends and boils into happiness and well-being. So that's why I feel it's so easy to, to fall in love with positive psychology because it's, it's a true thing. We all, after um, achieving what we want to achieve, you know, and getting successful in what we do, we want to make an impact. Mm -hmm. and lead a fulfilled and successful life and a meaningful life. I love that. And I totally agree with you because even I had this conversation recently about what what really would bring you joy. And the mm -hmm. question that was asked to me was, if you get to um, ultimate happiness, let's say you've gotten everything, what would you want at that moment? Nothing, right? Exactly. You want nothing. And that's what we all want. We, we want to get to that point of not desiring anything else because we're happy and there are other ways of doing that without getting yeah. to that point. Yeah. But my question to you right now is, we talk about positivity and there's a lot of talk about positivity online as well, but is it possible or is it even good to always be positive? Absolutely no. <laughs> Absolutely no. And I'm against that, really, because as uh, there's a saying which I really love, it says, all sunshine leads to a desert. So it can't be all sunshine. And unfortunately, what's on social media these days is that, you know, positive vibes approach to life only. You have to be positive. No. Actually, as, as positive psychology practitioners, we don't look at, pos as, 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 at emotions as positive or negative. We look at emotions as data. There mm. isn't something called a positive emotion or a negative emotion. Every emotion is data. It's just like a traffic light. It's just like a signal for us to stop and to look within and see what's that. What's that trying to communicate with me? And if I, can, if I keep on saying positive, positive, then that's definitely a, something that we don't do as positive psychology practitioners. And actually, thank you for asking this question because it's a myth. <laughs> you know, they say Fatten lives on cloud number nine. She has like... <laughs> she's always happy. She's, she's all, and I don't. <laughs> you know, it's not like a happyology or a Pollyanna mm. approach to life only. It's not. It's, it's actually positive psychology is not seen as 
you know, the, ne- the absence of, of, of negative emotions. It's just what we can do to increase our positive states, to look at what brings us meaning. Mm-hmm. You know, they say there are two important days in your life, the day you are born and the day you find out why. Do you know what's your why? Do you know what's the meaning behind you being here? So looking at helping individuals finding meaning, finding life satisfaction, increasing vitality in their lives, that's what we are after, increasing those states, but not after um, saying that no negative uh, negativity is not there. Actually, we've been born with a negativity bias. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's good that through our evolution, our brain kept that part. Because now I would go to Burj Khalifa and jump from, from the top if, if I wasn't afraid, if I didn't, yeah. you know, manage my, my positive or negative emotions. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to, to know that, yes, we have this negative, ne- negativity and it is there. And people tend to remember negative uh, comments, negative feedback, more than any positive feedback, because this... Will, can, can create danger. This won't. If you neglected a positive feedback, mm. it won't affect you. It won't affect your performance as a leader, as an individual. But if you might, if you, you know, ignored a negative feedback to, to go into negative consequences. Mm-hmm. So it's important to point out and, and to know that negativity is there. And we can't say there's no negativity and no. I like that. So you are saying we are kind of like almost biologically wired yes. to pay more attention to the negativity, right? Because as you said, our fight or flight response Our brains are activated. only job, you know, she mm. is to uh, scan the environment and to see is it safe or dangerous, safe or dangerous. So anything that we would do for the first time is dangerous for our brain. Yeah. So, uh, so definitely we've, we've, we've been born with that. That, that's so that's so in point, right? Because when you mentioned how negative comments stick to you, I, 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 I've started to pay a bit more attention to how I approach this because I can get like a thousand positive comments and there's just one negative, but that's the one that I remember. Yeah, and that's not only you. Right, it's that's, everybody. Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> I was coaching an executive once and she's a female and she was complaining about her boss that, She's not supportive and blah, blah, blah. When we started, you know, digging deeper into into what that is, it turned out that she gave her one negative, one negative feedback and everything else was positive. But she was having her whole session on this one negative feedback. It taints everything. It took everything. Mm, mm. And she felt that she's not good enough and, you know, all the downward spiraling thing happens then afterwards. So, yeah, we need to, to build another set of muscles. Right. And it's just by practice. Because that's the thing. At the moment, I keep seeing these videos on social media where they're talking about how a lot of people in our generation are just operating at high cortisol levels because mm-hmm. we are always in fight or flight response because we're stressed, we have anxiety and all of these things. And I think it's so important then to be able to kind of like, reframe how things are happening to us and how we view things because our reaction is what determines you know how you feel about something Absolutely. it's not the actual thing just like as you said if a boss is saying something bad to you that doesn't give you anxiety it's what you feel about this that yeah. gives you anxiety so then what's your practical advice on to anyone listening right now in our audience when you know when you're going through something or like there's an external factor that's making you that's making you have negative um, feelings mm. about it. How do you reframe that? Right. First of all, you know that saying that says what you focus on grows, right? Yeah. So if I'm focusing all the time, and you pointed that out, like you found yourself, you know, dwelling a bit more yes. on the negative thing, which is very common. So if I focus my whole day on just that one thing, then that's what will be grown. Right. So how to, to counteract that is to put, it, put things in perspective, you know. It's, uh, if I want you to look at it as like a crisis uh, line uh, measure, you mm-hmm. know. One is no crisis, 10 is like extremely crisis. Right. 
And and that feedback or that comment, it's not necessarily feedback, it's a comment. Mm -hmm. Where is it on that? And let's put it in perspective. Does it really put me in a crisis mode? Does it really matter five minutes from now? And if not, we need to breathe. Yeah. We need to practice how to breathe. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because when we are breathing, it's re I've, like rewiring my brain, you know, to just take a, take, a, take, a, take a pause. And as I told you, it's like a traffic light. Take a <laughs> pause and see what I want to do with that. Right. And so many times, like one of the exercises that I would ask my clients to do is to write down all the stories that they would be telling themselves in relationship to this challenge <laughs> or to, in relationship to this right. negative comment yeah. or whatever. All the worst case scenarios. All the stories, <laughs> whatever you're saying. And I tell them, let's tap into your five senses, whatever you're seeing, whatever you're telling yourself, mm. whatever you're feeling, even if that challenge has a taste or smell, write it down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then... After this, I would, I would ask them, okay, let's, let's shake this and let's write a more possible or a proposed story that you could start telling yourself. And they would look at me like, what's what she's trying to do? And I'd say, you know, imagine a photographer wanting to take a photo for a landscape or a model. And they set their tripods and they look at the frame and they would say, mm, it's, this is not what I want. They can't change the landscape. They can't change the model. All what they can do is change the angle from where they are looking at only. And then they will look at and they would say, okay, so same thing, Sheen, in our life, I there, love are things, this. <laughs> there are things that we cannot erase. If just we can't change the angle from where they are, we, we are looking at, things automatically change. And when I say this, they start writing faster even. I see them. It's faster. They... And then at the end, I would say, okay, how are you feeling right now? And they would be, oh, much better. Okay, did you notice what happened just in less than 10 minutes? Th this exercise doesn't take more than 10 minutes. In less than 10 minutes, your brain told you two stories. And you've written down two narratives. And that's what our brain does. Mm -hmm. It can do a, a screenplay and a screen, <laughs> everything. Everything. In directing in yeah. seconds. So it's us up to us mm. to which story you want to believe. And I ask them, which, which story you want to believe? The second story. Okay. Mm. So now that's what we need to focus on. And it doesn't happen like that. It takes practice, practice, practice. Myself, I say I'm a positive psychology practitioner and I fall down and I find myself dwelling in, in the in, worst case, in the worst case mm. scenarios. But now I find myself uh, that I'm catching myself faster. So instead of saying like one hour, I would stay maybe 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then pull myself up. There's another um, metaphor, which I think you will like it. Okay. I learned from, uh, from Shirzad Shamin, fr from his positive intelligence uh, thing. He says, if you dwell on negative emotions, it's just like putting your hand on a hot stove. So the hot stove is important because you would know that you need to pull your hand fast. But if I dwell, it's just like allowing all my hand to just burn into ashes. Yeah. So it's all here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what we focus on grows. And mm -hmm. there are so many techniques we can work with, my, with, with our clients on. Yeah. I just named a few now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, this reminds me there is this, um, I don't know if it's a saying, a story, but it says that we suffer mostly in our own brain yes. than in reality yes. because we live out those worst case scenarios. And the problem with that is if it doesn't happen, you've already suffered in your head. Exactly. And if it does happen, you've suffered twice. twice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And how often does it happen? Like maybe 95% it won't. Very often, yeah. But that's the negativ negativity bias that we've been born with. Mm. So yeah. there's lots of work to be done so that we can build that positive muscle. Because mm. the negative muscle um, is toned. It's as <laughs> if you're, you're, you're exercising it yeah. every single day in the gym. So it's toned, it's beautiful. Throughout our life, it's been yes. working out. <laughs> you know, 30, 40 years. 
But to, to, to build the other one, that really takes practice. Yeah. And especially, you know, at a time today where the younger generation, they are really struggling with a lot of things. With the advent of social media, mm. you see a higher increase in social anxiety, which is which should not happen. You will think, how is that possible? But what what do you see? How does this impact, like, you know, the social media and everything that's going on with the new generation? How is this preventing them from, you know, working that positive muscle? It is definitely affecting them. I have two kids, I told you, and they are 13 and 12. Okay. So are the, they are the at teenies. the epitome <laughs> <laughs> of being affected and the peer pressure and all of that. And it is definitely uh, affecting a lot their self-esteem. And uh, girls and boys, I have both. a girl and a boy, bo mm. both. Mm. And the work, I think, as parents is is on us. Of course. You know, mm. um, what am I what am I modeling at home? Yes. Because kids see, kids do. Mm. Right? They absorb it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I keep, words have, has no has no no weightage no weightage uh, thank yes. you <laughs> so uh, if they see me uh, functioning from a position of fear and negativity all the time that's that what they will be seeing right like just yesterday my son got a stomach bug mm -hmm. and i was telling him before i before i knew it's a stomach bug because he started by saying i have tummy pain mm -hmm. and that's it there were no other signs right you know? And I told him, mommy, just, you know, think about that. This is something if you got busy with uh, with your um, work at school, then I think this can be like you can counteract that negative feeling that mm -hmm. you have in your tummy. And he looked at me and I tell I told him this is what I do. Right. Like I don't sit in the bed if I have this tummy pain right now because it's just a small thing. If it's major, yes, we need to, to pause and look mm -hmm. at that. So after one hour, the school called me and they said he, he's not feeling well. Okay. And, and the other symptoms started. Got it. And that's just one hour, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just empowering our kids and telling them that they can do it. It's not what the, 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 the audience or the, 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 the peers are saying that's mm -hmm. the truth and letting them see us behaving that way. That would make a big difference in mm. my opinion. Yeah. And OK, I like how you were talking about, you know, um, the relationship between parents and kids as well. But um, one thing that I know you talk about a lot and it just came to mind. So I thought, let me ask you about this. Again, very trendy topic, which is the five love languages, okay. right? So <laughs> tell us a little bit more about what that means. And because I think we have a different language for giving and one for receiving. Is that right? So the five lo love languages and the actually I talk about it more now in the workplace, which mm. is the oh. five languages of appreciation in the workplace, Ooh. which are the same exactly. It's for Gary Chapman, the same author. He did several series and he's I a love genius that. for that. <laughs> yeah. So the five love languages is that if you're Mauritius, I'm Lebanese, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I if I, I can't understand your language, no. and maybe I think you can't understand no, right? I don't. Arabic <laughs> at all. <laughs> so if we talk in our languages, you we wouldn't be understanding no. at all. Mm -mm. So we decided to talk in English, right? Mm -hmm. It's a common language. So my language has to be similar or at the same level of your language so that we can talk. So if I talk in words of appreciation and that's like Chinese to you, you would not understand what that means, right? Unless you understand my language. Mm -hmm. So for, in order to, to show our love for others, we need to speak the same language. And the five lang love languages are words of appreciation. Mm -hmm. So I know that you, my husband loves me <laughs> <laughs> if he speaks my language, which is, you know, words of appreciation. And yes. that's my language. And the second language is quality time. Mm -hmm. And that's his language, mm -hmm. my husband's language. <laughs> right. Meaning if I spend time with him, Fatin loves me. Got it. And if I don't, then Fatin is totally ignoring me. Got it. Even if we didn't talk 
Mm. Like even in the book, he wrote something which I found extremely funny. He like a, a couple went for a hunting trip because her husband wants her to join him on his trip hunting. Got it. And she doesn't do hunt. She doesn't hunt. <laughs> she she just sat there the whole day doing nothing, mm-hmm. just beside him with him. Yeah. One when they are when they were back, he said, "This is the best trip ever." Oh my god! <laughs> and that's because she spent quality yes. time, and that's quality time. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the third one is gifts. Yes. So, and it's so easy. It's a, it's the easiest love language. It is. Uh, they say, uh, just know if if it's a gift, just get someone yeah. a gift, and mission accomplished. Yeah. And then there's acts of service. Mm. So if you see me busy, and you know, help me with something. I would appreciate that because if the, if that's my you know word, love language love yeah. language, and finally is is physical touch or yeah. intimacy. So in the workplace, it's exactly the same languages, mm-hmm. but for example, for physical touch, it's it's the high the five, high five or the pat on the back when Got you it. do it to your employees. Mm. Languages of appreciation is the same thing. Acts of service, seeing your coworker busy and, and helping. helping. Um, quality time, like lots of lots of uh, employees want to spend more times with their managers, and and just feeling that the, my manager gave me thirty minutes this oh, morning, mm. they would go back home and talk the whole week maybe about it. Mm. <laughs> that you know, I felt I felt uh, heard and seen, and that's to to them, it's it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, and there is another book for teens and for children, yeah, the five language, five love languages for teen, for children, for in wow. the workplace. So he did so, so many versions of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And it is so interesting that they did it for the workplace, because I do think that one of the rising kind of like things that we are noticing in the workplace is that feelings and soft skills are we are now realizing they are equally important to the hard skills Mm -hmm. just similarly as to how women are now being given more of a space because you know previously women would have to adopt a bit more masculine skills in order to rise high into Mm -hmm. the ranks because things like empathy and stuff are seen as not that great but tell us a bit more about how when you work in the workplaces how do you see this evolving right so um, in terms of mental health, definitely it's an issue. Burnout, you would hear about it a lot more than what we used to, to mm. hear about mm-hmm. before. Um, we, we see that. And thankfully, more and more organizations are realizing the importance of, um, of coaching, of one-on-one coaching or of group coaching or of team coaching. And they are investing in this because... I'm I'm really biased for coaching <laughs> because I'm a living proof that coaching transformed of course. my life. Uh, and although it sometimes, you know, has like a lot of a negative connotation right now because of how many coaches are there out there. But the real thing is that coaching unlocks people's potential by asking thought provoking questions to achieve personal or professional goals. That's the definition. So we all have the resources within us. Our job is just to pull that out. There's this saying that everyone is a star. They just need to learn how to shine. You, everyone is a star. Everyone is resourceful, creative, and whole. And it's just how we can unlock that. And I, when I started, I said I have unwavering belief in people's potential because I see how much difference that makes when I'm coaching people one-on-one and having these conversations and seeing in their eyes that, oh, this lady believes in me. And you would see them achieving their goals one thing at it. And it's like a domino thing. So they start with a goal, but then all other aspects in their life are just tuck, tuck, tuck open because of believing in themselves. And that's something that I noticed a lot when I went into positive psychology, uh, I, I didn't know positive psychology existed. I had no idea, Sheen, that this is a science. Uh, I graduated as a pharmacist. I have a bachelor's in chemistry. So very, you know, core 
science yes. background. I have knew, no idea or didn't look into psychology at mm-hmm. all until I reached a certain point in my time. I may be drifting away from the from that's the question, okay. but you know that's that's really important to to again highlight the importance of unlocking people's potential. So I reached a point in my life that I was best sales achiever. I was achieving amazing across the Gulf region. And still, I found that I'm not happy. And I struggled a lot. Like, how can a person be this much grateful? Because gratitude is a big thing for me, yet I'm not happy. Like, am I a hypocrite or Mm -hmm. what? Like, how can a person be grateful but not happy? This, These two don't mix. It doesn't work, yeah. (laughs) So I started looking. I started looking. And then, you know, that um, uh, saying for Rumi, he says... um, uh, when the te- when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I think I wasn't ready back then. Okay. Until the po- moment reached, and I saw a course, uh, f- and the professors were from UC Berkeley, and the course was called the Science of Happiness, and I was like, what? <laughs> happiness? I'm looking for happiness, and I'm a science person. I believe in science. I automatically joined that, and I realized that there. I understood happiness totally wrong and I understood that happiness is a is a well it's a, it's a frame it's a framework a well-being model is a framework and I was fixated on the achievements because I was an achiever I was doing really well I have a good salary good position everything was amazing and that's only one part of happiness the other parts are meaning relationships mm-hmm. Uh, being in a state of flow, like so engaged in what you're doing that you're so much in flow and positive emotions. What am I doing to increase positive emotions? So through that, I came to realize that as individuals, we don't love ourselves. And we think, and I'm speaking about myself, that I, for a long period of my life, thought that self-love is selfish. And, And just talking about your potential and your achievements is all bragging. So just play small, sit quiet, and and just, you know, mm. stay quiet, <laughs> to put it <laughs> nicely, you know. And then through coaching, I realized that, no, it's not bragging if it's based on facts. And no, it's important to acknowledge me so that when I am acknowledging myself, I'm giving... Uh, permission for everyone in the room to acknowledge themselves Mm -hmm. and hence what I really talk about now allowing people to see that they are enough because we haven't been raised like that unfortunately our you know we're not here to blame our parents or the teachers or the culture or the society they did the best they can with what Mm, they did of course but we know differently now I talk a lot. (laughs) I was just thinking throughout when you were talking, I had different things I wanted to ask. And now I have a list of questions (laughs) just based on that one answer. But I think I will go to um, what you were talking about in terms of happiness, you know, because that's something I relate to a lot. I was also in a corporate job that I did not like. And the same as you, I was like, is this being ungrateful? Because Mm. this is something I really wanted and I worked hard for it and I got it. But I'm not ungrateful. I'm just unhappy with it, right? And, and um, you know, there was this study that was done in Harvard, and I think it lasted 60 years. Have you heard yes, of that study, right? that affects the What affects longevity. happiness, right? It was happiness. Oh, okay, okay. It was, um, so they started with them when they were very young, and they were monitored over 60 years. And they were, you know, things like money, health, uh status relationships and everything was taken into account and the factor that had the biggest impact on happiness was the quality of the relationships in your life yes and i think that's one thing that we kind of like disregard because we think that oh you know once i'm set with money with a job with a career that i want a house a car and everything then i will take care of the relationship around me but then you're unhappy throughout and i think Mm -hmm. that's exactly what you were touching on um, but then also you talk about not being enough. Mm. And um, honestly, I feel like this is the biggest problem of our current generation, yes. right? Yes. People really do not think they're enough, especially when we're talking about women. 
And you know what you were talking about? Um, because I also coach women, but I coach specifically on career. Okay. And the thing about you saying that it's bragging if I start to talk about my achievement. And I have gotten this comment many times where when people ask me, what, what did you do? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I studied science. And every time my friends get really annoyed with me, they're like, no, you need to say that you went to Oxford, you went to Cambridge, you got a PhD in spinal research. Don't say you are in science. <laughs> and, but for me, I'm like, why would I say this? Yeah. And that just sounds like bragging. But at the same time, now I've understood that. But no, like this is my achievement. Exactly. And it's a I'm, fact. Exactly. It's a fact. And I'm not bragging. This is just my identity. And also, you never know who this can impact around you. You know, who are you inspiring with? your story, which is why the podcast is here as well, you know, just like sharing stories to inspire other people. But the whole, and the number of times women think that I should take little space, let, let's not take too much space in a room, let me not yeah, talk too much, small, right? Yeah. Let's play it small, especially in the workplace. So the whole not being enough, for like, well, what? how do you approach that? What would you advise anyone in the audience listening right now who is relating to this thing of, I do not feel like I'm enough? Yeah. The, the the fastest thing that comes to my mind is to list their achievements and list the things that they are proud of. Uh, list the, how many times they've helped someone. And um, um, what else? Um, like their, what they're proud of, what they are, uh, the, what they've achieved, uh, their, um, how many times they've helped someone. And then looking at the above... My, the, the question is, looking at the above makes me realize that I, and then fill in the blanks. And when they look at, at this list that they, they've just written, they would say, I'm awesome, I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm, and then, okay, now the work is to build that. Because mm. it doesn't happen. They would forget it just of when course. they leave the office, of right? So the work is by practicing. Mm -hmm. Every time that you do something and how you talk to yourself about it makes a big difference. The self-talk. Am I talking negatively or demeaning myself, you mm -hmm. know, or am I talking just like the thing that, you know, was a big thing for me is that I would never talk negatively to people. I would never shame people. Why yeah. would I shame myself? Exactly. And I realized it's only, not only me. And that's what I realized through coaching, that this is a very common thing. And almost, I can say easily 80% of my clients, men and women, again, they talk negatively to themselves. And I see it because I coach more men because mm -hmm. of the executive, you know, thing, uh, they are harder on themselves than what we think women are because they are the, the hunters, the, right. you know, for the family. So if they didn't... The pressure is harder. Oof, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I like what you said about making a list because I remember a friend of mine, mm. she used to work at Amazon and what her manager told her was to write a book of wins, right? So every nice. time you would do something well at work or you would get, um, you know, someone would give you some positive log feedback, it log it in. And then whenever you feel like you're not performing or maybe um, imposter syndrome kicks in, then to just go into that book and read it as, as if you're hiring this person. Wow. And when you look at it, you'll be like, okay, this person is pretty cool. Yes. They, they, they should get this job or even a better job. Wow. I and, like that. Right. And yeah. again, is the reframing yes. of how you talk to yourself. And, uh, I completely agree with what you're saying. Our narrative in our head is the worst. The things you say to yourself, you would never say to someone else. And this is the voice that is in your heads from birth to death. And 24-7. All the time. It doesn't stop. No. It doesn't stop. <laughs> like while driving here, how many times, how many thoughts come? Even now when we're talking exactly. to each other, you have thoughts in your head. Exactly. <laughs> so if that that is negative, then it's just killing you from the inside, right? But we focus on growth. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But uh, another thing you talked about um, while we were discussing was um, accomplishing goals, yeah. right? And one thing I've seen myself struggle with is once one goal is done, to immediately jump on the next one, mm. right? We're always like running after the next thing. 
without fully appreciating what we have accomplished because there is this, I feel like this pressure, a lot of times self-imposed, that we need to keep achieving. We right. need to keep hustling because otherwise, what are we doing? Yes. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And uh, I have a very recent example for one of my <laughs> friends. She texted me and she said, I uh, I uh, completed the interview and I did well. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting them to reply to me. I was like, okay. Okay. Just a few hours later, she said, guess what? They replied that was so fast. And I'm invited for the next interview. Amazing. So I was like, amazing. That's yeah. exactly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah. And she said, hey, hey, Fatin, I didn't finish the next interview yet. And I was like, come <laughs> on. Can you just celebrate that yes. you did that? Because it was, I think, the third or fourth interview. Exactly. That she, can you just pause and say, and she said, okay, you are absolutely right, but I'm not used to this. And she's not alone. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We are always on that hamster wheel. We keep wanting to jump from this job to uh, this achievement, this goal to the other, to yes. the other without celebrating. And celebrating achievements is really important for our brain as well. It gives us that serotonin kick <laughs> that, yes, well done, mm. you know, and I deserve a pat on the back. Exactly. So just, again, <laughs> breathe in. Take a step back. <laughs> Take a step back and congratulate yourself. Yeah. So you can do better because... There's a, there's a theory in, in positive psychology called the, uh, the Broden and Built Theory. And uh, Sonia Lubomirsky, her family name is so hard. <laughs> she talks about how our positive emotions broaden our, and build our creativity and our performance just because we have those positive emotions. So when we are celebrating ourselves, we, have, we, we are swimming with these positive emotions so that we can... Be more creative when mm -hmm. I'm preparing for my interview, for my maybe final round of mm -hmm. interviews. I can do even better because I can open my, my I can co-create, I can, I can brainstorm different mm -hmm. ideas and I do better. Yes. But if I kept on the run, then I'm just focused like this mm -hmm. and I cannot see. Yeah. So if I want to broaden, it's, it's just like an upward spiral thing. It gets broadened and built, you know. Mm -hmm. You, you you keep on increasing the horizon or the 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 spectrum of what your achievements would look like and and I think just generally it's just in terms of how you feel going through the process right it just makes it easier 100%. and if we if we're not celebrating and being happy throughout and it's not about the destination as they say right it's all about the journey yes. so if you're going to wait for the destination to celebrate, then the whole life, <laughs> yeah, your whole life will be spent just being unhappy and not mm -hmm. really celebrating anything. I remember um, when I passed my driving license here, I was extremely happy yes. because for me, it felt like it was a big thing. Yeah. And um, somebody did tell me, but everybody gets the driving license. Why are you celebrating that? And I thought, but what's the harm? Like, exactly. what's the harm in celebrating the small wins? Right. And, if you're only going to wait for the big things to celebrate, how many celebrations will you have in your lifetime? Exactly. And what, why are we counting <laughs> instead of just celebrating everything? No, absolutely. I, I salute you for that. And, and I definitely would encourage you to celebrate the, the many things. Right. Because this is not a mini thing, by the way, especially in Dubai. <laughs> People exactly. really struggle. Like when I did my, my uh, assessment here, thankfully, I, I, from the first time I got my Me driving too. license. <laughs> but there was a gentleman beside me. He had, he had done that for six times. And when I was leaving, he said, did you pass? I was like, yes. And he was like, no, I didn't. I, was, I felt so sad oh, for no, him. Oh, no, not again. So tell your friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not everyone passes. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's, it's all about you know feeling good yeah. as you said it's all about being positive and when something good happens it's good to celebrate and and i, I and i have a, another friend who i i love for her she celebrates every single thing nice. what, whatever it her. is you know as an influencer every mark she hits she will have the balloon she will have the cake and i'm like good for you yeah. you know because that's keeping you going is pushing you and you you had a goal, you achieved it, you celebrate yes. it. Next one. Exactly. And I think that that's how that's how we we need to keep going. But um, so you said you work in unlocking people's potential, yes. right? So um, do you offer coaching service? Would you like to tell our audience about how they can reach you as well? Okay, yeah, absolutely. 
So I'm on LinkedIn, Fatan Al Ayash. I'm on Instagram. I'm on all socials, basically. Amazing. The links will be in the description <laughs> yeah. box anyway. Yes. And uh, they can schedule. I always schedule the first session uh, to uh, to see if I can work with them, if mm-hmm. I can support them or not, because there are some clients I cannot support and of I can course. direct them to someone else. So I have the first session. And after the first session, we will assess if we are going to be working together or not. Mm-hmm. I work um, with anyone, like my niece, when <laughs> when, I, when it was back in the days, lo- I was looking for who I would want to work mm-hmm. with. I was like anyone who looks like me. And people were like, what does that mean? Anyone who is ready to step out of their comfort zone. Because I step out of my comfort zone a lot and I seek discomfort because that's where growth happens yeah and I am where I am because of how much I like going from pharmaceuticals to higher education and working in the higher education for seven years and then now having my own company and starting as if from scratch because I'm I haven't done that before right so stepping out of the comfort zone is a is a is a is a th- requirement Mm. for who I would love to work with because that's what I want. I want success stories for these individuals and I believe I'm not here to 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 go around in circles and they not achieve their goals. So if they are really ready to step out and do great things, yes, I'm the the right person for them. And um, I'm in Dubai. I'm based in Dubai. I've been in Qatar, so I keep on going back to my Qatar office as well. Mm -hmm. Now my focus is definitely on executive coaching. Yes. So I do a lot of that with Mm -hmm. my corporate clients. I do see individual clients as Mm -hmm. well. And uh, one thing I didn't share yet is that because I fully believe that we are making the world a better place, one coaching conversation at a time, I started training individuals to be coaches themselves and we got the program accredited from the international coaching federation and it's not only coach training it's positive psychology and Ah. so it's called the certified positive leadership coach amazing so we have cohorts in dubai we have cohorts in doha how long is it it's um uh, so it's an 84 hour program mm-hmm. uh, it has 10 hours of mentoring which is a requirement for the for mm-hmm. the ICF for the International Coaching Federation and it's usually done over like three four months depending on how fast they would uh, be doing the mentoring but the coach training mm-hmm. is over three full weekends if it's for the individual clients mm-hmm. for the corporate clients we do it during the week and usually it takes again three months. Um, depending on how many times per week we are training the managers to to be coaches. Because again, as I said, many companies are investing in Mm. this modality right now, which is music to my ears, Mm. not because I'm a coach, but because I believe in its power. Yeah, Yeah. it's needed. It is needed. So the three weekends are in person? In person. Okay, amazing. So it's for people who are based in Dubai, basically. Or Doha. Yeah, or Doha. Oh, enough. you run it in both yeah, places. I, I run it in both countries. Amazing. And yeah. when, do you have a cohort yes. starting? Yeah, I okay. have actually in October and November Amazing. in Dubai. So okay. I would love to to have people. Yeah. Uh, they, we already, like the registration already uh, started and some people reserved their seats already. Uh, the the do, Doha cohort is in September and October. So Doha and then the Dubai one is in October, November. Yeah. 2024 amazing <laughs> so all the links will be there for anyone who wants to check it out strongly recommend thank you <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned while you were talking about this about stepping out of your comfort yeah. zone and how this these are the people you want to work with and i think it's super important and you know last week we had a call and we, we talked about this as well and then afterwards i have a friend who just moved to dubai literally last week and oh. she started working as a lawyer and on the first day, she was like, I am so out of my depth. And she said, they've already given me work. There's no training. There's nothing. And now I, I don't know what to do. It's tough. She was like, I am. I don't think I like it. And because we just had that conversation, I told her, but that just means you are uncomfortable right now, right? You're outside of your comfort zone. And nobody likes being a beginner. Because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. No (laughs) one likes it. Absolutely. (laughs) You feel like you're so dumb compared to everyone else. You're still learning. But that's just normal. And it means that you are outside of your comfort zone where growth happens. Absolutely. That, there's the, that's the only way, actually, to grow is to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. 
And I think you, you, if you fully agree with me. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah. I think even for me, I was very reluctant for change, right? Yeah. Any kind of change, I don't like it. And I would avoid it at all costs. But then I realized that every time I was forced into a new situation, that's where something bigger and better happened. Yes. So yes. now I've started to... Embrace I don't like it, it still, <laughs> but I no know it's for the it. greater good, right? Yeah, no one likes it. As you said, no one likes beginner. No. You know, like today, it's my first podcast in Dubai. And I, I was can't like, tell. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. But, you know, like looking at you and how professional, I was like, oh, oh I'm so beginner. And right. We all feel that way. And that's, that's yeah. Yeah. But, but don't they say don't compare your day one to someone else's oh, day yeah. hundred. Oh, yeah. I right. work a lot on myself on that mm. because I'm sometimes competitive. Even in the gym, <laughs> I'm very competitive. So I keep on reminding myself. And it's like sometimes my mantra, mm. don't compare your first day to, especially I'm starting again new here in Dubai. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it is still your new day one, oh, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. People don't know me, you yeah. know, and yet. Qatar, I, <laughs> yet. Yes, I love that. In 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 uh, in Qatar, I people know me. I grow by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It's it's here. There are a few final things probably we want to talk about. So you you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but the whole concept of self love, yes, right. Some people struggle with it. Some people have too much of it. <laughs> but, well, how do we find the right balance right. for that? Yeah. So actually, I studied self-love uh, in my dissertation mm -hmm. in positive psychology, and I was uh, assessing the, the role of self-love on, on coaches' well-being and, and well-being because we were always thinking uh, uh, like about narcissism and the other extreme, and I was looking at the, the other side of the story and how it Im impacts the well-being. So m there isn't any like one definition for, for self-love, how I see it personally, and that's my definition if you want, it's how you honor and respect yourself and you set boundaries for things that do not sit well with you. Mm -hmm. So when I, because when I'm saying no to others, I'm saying yes to myself. And the biggest learning uh, for me was putting my oxygen mask first. And once I recorded a video and I said, I owe an apology to the aviation industry. <laughs> because for a very long period, I was like, these are idiots. How can they expect me to put in my oxygen mask before putting it to my kids? And then I realized that literally, if I wasn't saved, these people are fully dependable on me. Mm -hmm. So self-love is putting your oxygen mask and knowing that you are enough. I am enough just like that. I don't need any additional um, uh, valid. I, I don't need validation from others. And that's, I think, really needs lots of work and focus on am I really looking for external validation or internal validation? So as you can see, it's a it's a it's a big definition or mm -hmm. It's, it's about putting your oxygen mask first, internally validating yourself, uh, knowing that I am enough and saying no for things that I don't want to do them. Because this will end up, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it firsthand, you know, when I do things which deep down I don't want to do them. And then I would just, you know, make a big fuss out of it and... <laughs> And it's, it's now against me. Yes. <laughs> so I started learning to, no, I cannot, I cannot cater for BS. I cannot cater for uh, things that do not sit well with me. I cannot cater for negative relationships mm -hmm. or toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. There isn't any space. And that's how I know that I'm loving myself, mm. you know? Yeah. And also, um, don't they say that self-love is also kind of, you delaying gratification as well for yourself. Yeah. That discipline is self-love. Just like you won't eat something that's bad for yourself. You will work out even if you don't like it. Yeah. And you will maintain your healthy boundaries with people and exactly. in the workplace and the personal life. Yeah. 
Well, incredible, Fatan. This has been amazing. Thank and you. as a token of thank you, we have a little bouquet for oh, you. Thank you. That's and for me. It was signed by the card. The card is signed by the previous oh. guest, and you get to sign for the next guest as well. Oh, amazing. Okay. Thank you so much. And do you have any parting message for our audience? Um, thank you so much for this. That, You're very welcome. That's, that's amazing. Uh, parting message is uh, believe in yourself because I believe in each and every individual. And as I said, everyone is a star. They just learn how to shine. And um, lots of love for you and for your audience. Thank you. <laughs> and I can't wait to see how you thrive in Dubai. Yes, I'm looking forward for that too. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.